And a very good morning to you. It's Saturday the 21st of September 2013. Chris Redden with this week's United Kingdom Talk. 21st of September. Isn't it going quickly? Eh? We've had some very cold weather here in the UK uh, recently. However, it's heating up again. Oh yes, we're in for a little bit of an Indian summer. I do like an Indian summer. Just when you thought the summer was over and the cold weather came, and actually it did change um, quite considerably the temperature. It went from like very hot to very hot cold, you know, in, in the space of a day. That was a couple of weeks ago. And gradually it's been getting a little bit warmer. I noticed last night I was actually able to walk uh, back from my car um, uh, to the house in just a t-shirt and that was like a about up past about 4 or 4 15 in the morning so it's warming up again and indeed next week next week we could be seeing temperatures of 80 85 degrees fahrenheit that's i don't know what that is uh, 22 23 24 degrees centigrade that's not bad is it for the end of september we've had it before you know in september sort of a, a mini uh, a, a little mini um oh what's that Oh, it's, that's my mobile phone. Let me just turn that uh, a while for a moment. Um, yes, we've had it before when it's been quite hot in September. It's not the first time, many times. But it is nice. It is nice just when you think summer is over for it to come back again in all its glory. I just hope we don't pay for it too much in the winter because you, you know I don't like the cold weather. Good morning to Terry H. Good morning, Terry. I thought it was the other Terry from... Uh, I thought it was Terry T. But it's Terry H. Good morning, Terry, who says, Waho, Saturdays. Well, it's the second one, Terry. Where were you for the first Saturday, dear? You know, these people come in at the last minute, don't they? And they want everything at the last minute. Where were you? You were a week late, Terry. Last week, we did a Friday and a Saturday show. Did you not see the one with my best mate, Ron, last Saturday? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The funny thing is with it, the, the thing is with my best mate, he leaves every, he rushes. He rushes and rushes and rushes. I don't know if it's a, because he's a bit young, although he's not all that young. He's in his 40s. You know, I do like to wind him up sometimes because, of course, he's gone past 40 now, which means he's closer to 50 than 30. You know, in the same tone. And I don't usually like to tell people this. Come a bit closer. Don't tell anyone this, right? I am actually. Cl oh, where's the cat? I don't. I, I, I don't even want the cat to know this. Who, incidentally, has now taken up residence in the seat in my office. Although she's not there at the moment, the cat has found a new position. Isn't that funny? Cats seem to have a favourite position, okay? And they stay there for weeks and weeks, and then they find a new favourite position. And they stay there. And the cat has recently <coughs> moved into the office on the spare chair over there. And she's usually, I can usually find her curled up there. She was there until about three minutes to 12. And now she's disappeared. She had a little bit of a meow. Meow? Meow? Jumped off the chair and went downstairs, possibly for something to eat. Or maybe she just wants some peace and quiet. Maybe she doesn't want to sit here, you know, and listen to me rabbit on for a couple of hours or whatever it is going to be today. Now, where was I? I I've, I've missed... Oh, yes. Oh, yes, my best mate. So, yes, he's closer to 50 than 40. I... I... am closer... Are you ready for this? I, I know you, you, you... Those of you that watch the show are going to think, no. You're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you. I am closer... to... Oh, she's listening. I know it. Katie! Come on, darling. You coming in? Can you hear her? <laughs> Katie? Come on then, what's up girl? Come on. Come on. What's up? You coming up here? Here, yeah. come say hello. Here she is. Katie the cat is in the house, aren't ya? Hey, kiss kiss. Hey, what's all that noise for? Hey? You're making a lot of noise down there today, aren't ya? You got something to eat? I know you got something to eat because I put it down a few minutes ago. There you go. Go on your chair. There you go. All right. Poor old soul. Oh, I'm going to sneeze now. She's going to make me sneeze. And I haven't got a tissue here. Anyway, as I've been trying to tell you for the last ten minutes, okay, the secret is 
I am now closer. I don't know how I can tell you this. I am now closer to 60 than 50. Then 40. I'm closer to 50 than 60, but I'm closer to 60 than 40. That's dreadful. How on earth did I manage to get to 50 even? Jesus Christ! If you knew half of what I did in my 30s in nightclubs and all that business, God's sake! I'm lucky to be here. I really am. Helped, kept alive by the use of various chemicals, tablets and potions. I'm still able to be here. How bloody marvellous is that? <laughs> I know that I know I know what you're thinking. Oh no, he's, he's not. He's lying about his age. Yeah, I, I can. I don't mind sharing that with you because you are a special friend. You know, we've got a little bit of a secret going on here. I mean, don't tell all your friends. It's our secret. I can still get away with them at 37, 38. You know, when people are talking to me. Oh yes, very lucky. Now, uh, if you just switched on, a warm welcome along to you. My name's Chris Reardon. This is a live show, or you might be watching the recording. Now, how do you know if you're live or not? If you are with us live, have a look at your clock. It's just gone seven minutes past 12. On Saturday, the 21st of September, 2013. If that's, the, that's UK time, if that's the time where you are now, then you are indeed with us live. And you're welcome. That means... You can join in live. There are three ways to join in. Whether you're watching a live or a recorded show, you can use the email. The email is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you're with us live, you can join in by Skype or telephone. If you have Skype, the Skype username is... Chris Reardon, that's all one word, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Chris Reardon, the Skype name, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. There's also a local London phone number. Local London means it's not one of those premium rate things. Local London number 020 8133 Eight one double three six three five eight. They're the two live methods of communication. All right. As I say, just coming up to uh, eight minutes past uh, midday. Apparently, Terry did watch the show on uh, Monday, and he says he looks nothing like Terry Turner. Well, I can see that, dear. I mean, he looked much younger for a start. Terry is looking a bit old and haggard now, isn't he? Which radio station is he starting up this week? Another one somewhere. <laughs> Good old Terry. We all love Terry, don't we? And good morning to Mike, who's uh, in the, on the Tyne, up to north, near Newcastle, up to north, who's with us this morning as well. Good morning, Mike. Nice to hear from you. Um, yes, I know you're disappointed that I'm on my own today, aren't you? Last Saturday, we were treated... Treat it to my best friend, Ron, who popped into the studio, who kind of texted me at four minutes to midday and said I'm on my way, you know, without actually mentioning that he was going to come in. So there I am sitting here, four minutes, I'm all ready, you know, little stack of papers in front of me, one microphone, lights on, ball turning around, and I was ready, text me at four minutes, and oh, I'm coming, you know, and you're rushing around then, and that is Ron down to a T. He's a Russia. No, not Russian, dear. A Russia. He's a Russia. He has to do everything at the last minute as quickly as possible. And it gets on my bloody nerves. It really does. If I've got an appointment somewhere, and sometimes he takes us in the car, okay? If I've got an appointment somewhere, he's like, oh, I'll take you. He comes out. And if it's like a two o'clock appointment, I like to be somewhere a good half an hour before the appointment. So if it's an hour's journey, I'll probably leave it two hours. Hey, you can get to the place, and if you're too early, you know, you've always find something to do. Perhaps you can pop into a, a restaurant, have a meal, have a small meal, you know, a jacket potato with beans and cheese, something like that. I do like that. I'm trying to get off the dairy, though. 
but I am trying to get off the dairy because I think dairy, if you're vegetarian, dairy can be just as bad. The mistreatment of animals in dairies is just as bad, believe it or not. Oh, I'm not going to go into it. Yeah, have a look on YouTube at all these different videos. Uh, you know, mistreated cows or something like that typing. Not now. Don't go away now, dear. I'm desperate for the viewers, to be honest. Desperate for listeners. And, um, you know, you can go in for a meal or have a little look around somewhere and then go into your appointment. And there's no rush or anything. He will leave it till the last minute. He will know in his head roughly how long this journey will take. Say the appointment's for two o'clock and it's an hour's journey. He'll leave at one o'clock. No time for any problems, accidents, anything like that. It's just totally impossible. It really is. And it's rush, rush, rush all the time. What other thoughts can I think of him? Well, I mean, where, where do you want me to start, to be honest? Eating. If we have a little meal out, he eats at the speed of light. So a meal might come, because we're great fans of carveries. Obviously, I go to a carvery, I don't have the meat, right? I actually now, um, yes, uh, just a second. I actually now don't even bother having the vegetarian option, okay? So when I go to a carvery, like a Toby Carvery or something like that, we have them all over the UK, I'll have just the vegetables. A great big pile of potatoes, admittedly, we love the roast potatoes in Toby Carveries. Best part of the whole meal. No need to be eating dead animals as well, okay? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, that's what it is, isn't it? Don't try and cover it up with saying, oh, it's meat, or it's a nice piece of beef, or it's a lovely pork chop. No, it isn't. It's a dead animal. And that's it. <laughs> Sorry. I just say how it is. Okay? So I have the plate of the vegetables and the potatoes. Massive amounts of potatoes, and they do a lovely mash as well. And they also do sometimes onions in some sort of gravy, uh, some vegetarian gravy, which is really, really nice. So a big pile of these. And he'll have his, usually a bit of turkey, I think he has, or something like that. I'm still on my first potato, and he's almost finished the meal. And then, you know, they're not exactly small meals either. Because you, you'd pay one price and you can keep going up time and time again. So great big mound of potatoes. I'm eating my first potatoes. He's, he's going up for a second plate. It's absolutely shocking. I mean, it really is. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, and then he's sitting there twiddling his thumbs. And, I'm, and you, you, feel, you feel compelled to eat faster, don't you? Because someone else is finished. And the, the, even worse than that is when he comes around here, and perhaps we're going out somewhere, and I'm saying, oh, do you want a cup of tea first? Oh, yeah, okay. So I'll make the tea. And I'll look at the clock, admittedly, first, to see if we've got time for a cup of tea. Otherwise, he'd just leave it even later. And he's, he's often late. Whenever he's coming round here, right, I'll see you at one o'clock. I'll get a text at a minute to one. Oh, I'm running late. Every bloody time. Drives me mad. Every time you get a text, I'm going to be a bit late. When he has a cup of tea, it's the same, right? The tea, look, 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 look. Gulp down within a few seconds. Me, I'm sitting there gently sipping my cup of my large mug of tea, because I do, I do like a large mug of tea. And I'm a quarter of the way through mine, and he's... Are you ready then? I'm not ready yet. I'm drinking my tea. And I do like to enjoy a cup of tea. Not just gulp the bloody thing down and then it's all gone. Oh, it does annoy me. It's the same with the food. I like to, you know, just cut off a little bit. Okay, I do have big mouthfuls, especially if they're cheese and onion crisps. Walker's cheese and onion crisps. There was another one I had the other day. Where did we get those from? The garden centre, I think. They were doing some sort of crisps in the garden centre. I do like big mouthfuls of that. But I like to enjoy the food. Cut off a bit. Mm -mm. Oh, nice carrot. Mm. Oh... Lovely roast potato. Mm. Mm. Oh, a lovely bit of Yorkshire pudding. 
You can have all these things. You don't need to have the dead animal as well. That's it. See? Right? Him. <coughs> it's gone. Jesus. He actually said to me the other day that he doesn't enjoy eating. Morning, Marge. Marge has just <coughs> popped up on the Skype. Good morning, Marge. We're going to uh, Millie in a few moments uh, for a Skype call as well. So, Millie, I shall uh, call you in a second, my darling. It's just, just the constant rush. It was a bit like that in Ro shouldn't tell you. It was a bit like that in Rome, rushing all the time. Rush, 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 rush. Take it easy. Is that an age thing? Is that because I'm a little bit older than him? Ten years older than him now? I don't know. Oh, we've got a phone call coming in. Good morning. And who's that on the 0207 number? Coming to you live from London. It sounds like Mary from Ireland. A very good morning to you, Mary. How are you today, darling? I'm, I'm fine. I, I had a little bit of a, an accident in the week. Oh, hang on a minute. Sorry, I've just, I've just got you blaring away there. Sorry, viewers. Uh, you were very loud then, and that was my fault. Carry on. What was the same? Yeah, well, you know the way I'm having a little bit of uh, treatment at the moment? Yeah, you can say it. You can say whatever you want on here, darling. Chemo, we, chemo. She's having a bit yeah. of chemo at the moment. Mary yeah. looks at it, and she laughs yeah. at it in the face, don't you? Was yeah, you like, I am the Jesse J of Camden, as you said. You, what you, she's, she's dealing with a big C at the moment. Just, just tell us what song, in particular, that you sing to your surgeon every week at my karaoke nights. Mac the Knife. Mac the Knife, because he cuts it out and chucks yeah. it all away. Then he zaps me and... <laughs> Uh, anyway. She gets zapped with all this radio stuff and everything, don't you, Mary? Chemo, I've lost <laughs> my hair. Anyway, Thursday night, I was here, and I'd switched on the garden light. Yes. Um, you know, to show off my garden in the evening. Yes. And then I thought, ooh, better switch that off. So I went outside in my socks, and I realised that the light had attracted all the snails to the back door. The snails? Snails. So I was tiptoeing and switched the light off, and then I was like, ooh, snails, snails, I've got socks on. Oh, no, you were treading on them. Uh, yeah, and I went, ooh, and then I tripped over a piece of string that was attached to the hose that I used to pull up, to, to get the hose up to my roof terrace, yeah. to water my plants there. Tripped over that, and I fell in slow motion. Not into the snails. On my knee, scraped all my arm Ooh. down, and then I hit my head on the wall by my bay tree, and I broke a tile. Is that because you're too tight to turn the bloody light on out the back? No, I have switched it off. <laughs> I'm switching it off. So then I have to go in for chemo yesterday, and I've got gashes and bruises the whole way down my arm before they even started giving me the chemo. Oh, my God. I look like Herman Munster. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't fall into the snails, did you? Um, I, I managed to uh, kill one of the little... Oh, I feel so good. Because where I live, I've got um, all grass, you know, and trees everywhere. Uh, yeah. But there's a path between the sort of trees and the grass and my house. A lot, like a long path in front of all the houses. Yeah. And there are certain times of the year where I come home at night and there are hundreds of snails coming across the path. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, Mary. I, I'm well, you sorry. know one way to get rid of snails is when you have your hair cut, well, yes. it's a bit late for me now because I'm bald again, <laughs> sprinkle your hair yeah. around the plants you want to protect on top of the, you know, the soil. It doesn't affect the plants, but when the <laughs> snails get up there, they, it sort of stings them like cactus. Does that work? Yes, it does. Well, it's, it's, I think it's probably more humane than feeding them beer. I, I, I'm afraid I'm... I hate to tell you this, Mary, I put down the little blue things. Not good, is it, really? Well, does not, not, that not affect your cat? No, she, she doesn't go near them. She, I, I mean, I've been putting them down for years. And mm. We've got quite a lot of cats around here. I had three cats at one point. I've only got one now. The mm -hmm. neighbours the neighbors got But you two. got this stray cat. Eh? Stray you cat got me, I'm a stray cat. One of your karaoke songs, Stray Cut Strut. Um, and I put the blue things down. And, I, and uh, the thing is, you've got to put them down as soon as you start seeing the snails. Mm -hmm. that, that stops them. If you leave it, then they seem to multiply like anything. Under these bloody things. And they're horrible. Oh, and yet, now I don't feel guilty putting the blue things down. But if I'm walking back from the car and I mm -hmm. tread on one and you get that crunch, I feel so guilty. Is that why you don't eat meat either? What, snails? You're a snail killer. 
I'm a snout. Well, I'm a, I am a snout. It's exactly the same. Let's let's be honest about it. It's exactly the same as not eating the dead animals. Yeah, well, we all have to get our protein from somewhere. Well, baked beans, dear. Baked beans are a very good source of pro protein. But occasionally, I must stop having that on a Sunday night because it does does affect me having those baked beans. You might have noticed when you're Thank walking you. past the DJ box, to be honest, Mary. Yes, I have. Yes, Mary particularly when you're bending over trying to pick up <laughs> microphones that you didn't bring. <laughs> Mary comes along to the karaoke that we do at Belushi's in um, Camden Town every Sunday night between 8 oh, and 12. We have a good time there. And um, it's someone's birthday tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah, Jackie's. Jackie's 60th birthday tomorrow. Yeah. Have, you got, have you got anything planned? Or maybe you'd like... Oh, perhaps you could get in a really fit stripper. Yeah, um, well, that's Nathan. you. Nathan can do it. <laughs> Nathan can be the stripper. He's got a new no, tattoo. I, I wouldn't like to send her over the edge. He, he was showing me his new tattoo, Nathan. He's got yeah. a new tattoo on his leg. Have you seen it? No. Oh, ask him to see it. He'll proudly show yeah. you this, this tattoo on there. I, I don't want to know where it is. <laughs> oh, it's this on is his a leg. family show, dear. Okay. Is it on his leg or thigh? I can't remember now. I mean, he was, I, he was quite happy to show it to me, though. You know, I think he's, he quite likes me, really, but he won't admit it like because he's got his girlfriend there. I've seen him looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> But no, can we'll be down say, tomorrow evening for a little say, bit of a celebration. Can I just say? She doesn't say, know, but she's having a surprise party tomorrow afternoon. Oh, what time is that then? Three o'clock. Oh, is it, what, well, your house? No, 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 it's um, up at hers. But um, her son and daughter-in-law, three, have, are in cahoots with me. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah. I remember my mum's 60th birthday party. And um, I'd arranged to take her. There was a hotel up the road. And I'd gone in there and say, oh, did you do the meals? And the, yes, yes. The meal. I took her up there. They, they didn't do the meals. Uh. I nearly fell flat. So we ended up going in a harvester. But it doesn't matter, you know. Cause you it was and a, your car were eating the away. vegetables. But I wanted to take her special for her. Like, ah, that was before I was a vegetarian. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was before. That was before. <laughs> can I just now. say, um, you're, you're oh, someone... By the way, the crisps. I can't get a word in edgeways here, can I? Four times I've said it now. The crisps are what? tato, cheese and onion. Tato, cheese and onion are the best. They're yes. the ones. The They're Irish the ones. ones. Yes. Anyway, darling, I better let you go on and entertain your other listeners. OK then, Mary. Nice to talk to you and I'll see you tomorrow night for a bit of a sing-song. All right. God bless, Chris. Cheerio, my darling. Thanks for Bye. calling. Bye-bye. <laughs> here we are, lovely Mary in Camden. She's there for the karaoke tomorrow. I was all I was going to say, Mary. You didn't. I couldn't get a bloody word in edgeways. Then, could I? Was that you actually look good with the skinhead? Some people it suits. Some people it doesn't. I mean, I've almost got one myself. I'm actually down now to having my hair cut at a, a zero point one. So all you get almost is little dots of hair. Looks like dots of hair, and I have had a point five for quite a while. Um, been getting shorter. I think it kind of suits me. You see, the thing is, you're, you're trying to hide that bald spot in the middle. That's what it's all about. You are actually trying to hide the bald spot in the middle of your head, and that's why people in their sort of well, it could happen at any age. Some people lose their hair in their twenties. You know, they absolutely do lose their hair in their 20s. But that's why we have our hair short, uh, so that um, it, it, it hides the bald spot. And I, I know I go on and on about this a little bit. I don't mean to. Well, I do mean to, otherwise I wouldn't bother. Uh, let's go over to the USA and uh, Millie in Minnesota. Good morning, Millie. Hello, good morning. Right, good darling. afternoon for you. Yeah, well, it's uh, just coming up to 25 past 12 on this Saturday, the 21st <laughs> of September 2013. What's the weather like there? Is it warm there, um, uh, Millie? No, no, hun, it's not. I am currently up at the family cottage. Yes. Which is I where? Have, uh, um, Pelican Rapids, Minnesota. Right. And I arrived here last night, and I was... Now, you have to take into account, it's after 6 in the morning here. Yes. Well, that, and, yeah, but it's, it's better than the times I, yeah, that it was on before, isn't it? Right. It is. It is. But I had been, I had been sleeping, and my mother, bless her, she had a morning flight to get to because she's off on another one of her trips. Yeah. And I was sleeping, and all of a sudden, all I heard was clitter, clatter, crash, bang, wallop. <laughs> clitter, clatter, crash, crash, bang, wallop. Oh! What happened? 
<laughs> well, you see, this cottage is beautiful, but the walls are very, very thin. Right. And she was bumping and thumping her luggage downstairs. Right. Uh, to, you know, to bring it down so that my assistant and friend Lisa could take her to the airport. Uh, yeah, just just they, to let you know, boys and girls, uh, Millie is in a wheelchair, also known as motorised Millie, because it is a very fast wheelchair. Yes, if she doesn't it get, is. If she doesn't get served in restaurants quickly, she simply pushes a button and runs over the waiter's feet. Isn't that right, Mary? That's, uh, cor that's correct. That's what and you that told is, me before. <laughs> that is Chris's favourite story, I swear, that... <laughs> He will go on about that every chance he gets, but he did give me the, nick the handle of motorized Millie, and it has stuck. Yes. Over the years. Listen, I have a bit of news for you. Yes. Um, my, I told you the dates that my auntie and my mom would be coming to uh, the UK. Yes. Or originally... It was supposed to be between the between the sixteenth and the seventeenth. Yes. What is it now then? It is going to be. Um, they want to know. They want to. They want to see you. You and I um, between the seventh and the tenth of April. Oh, that's earlier, is it? Yeah, because um, my auntie has a. Timeshare at a Sloan Square uh, flat. Are you are you not actually coming over with them then? Is it like two separate holidays which just happen to be meeting here? Correct. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Let me do my cool. calendar thing. One minute. April the seventh um, to the tenth. Yes. Yeah, that's the days that they're wondering if they can get together with the two of us. Okay, seventh or ninth is good for me. Okay, great. I'll let my mom know. And I also need to tell you there is a bit of a change of venue. I thought I was going to be changing, uh, staying at the Chantry Court Hotel. Yes, where are you going now then? Um, it's the Waldorf Astoria. I have no idea where that is. Oh my God, you stay at all the best places, don't you? I can only dream of staying at such a place, my dear. I mean, it's all travel lodges and ibis for me. That's because you're tight. What a dreadful thing to say, Millie. You're starting to sound like Ronnie now. He says I'm tight. It's not true. You speak to my niece and nephews. They tell you I'm not tight when it comes to Christmas and birthdays and visits from great well, uncle you're not, Chris. But you're, but you're tight when it comes to holidays. When it comes to myself, you mean? Yeah, well, yes. I, well yeah. Two right and all. And Two right and all. Do you know I only flushed the toilet once a day? Uh, Chris, that's too much information. Well, I unless, really unless, of course, it, unless, of course, it, it fills up a lot, then I, I might flush it twice a day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing for you. I wasn't eating my breakfast just then. What have you had for breakfast? I haven't yet. Oh, okay. I, well, it's a bit I, early. I, what is it, up past six in the morning? Yes, and I, like I said, I had been sleeping... And all of a sudden, I hear bang, bang, clitter crash, and oh dear. <laughs> See, the walls in this cottage are very thin, yeah. and nothing is, you know, there isn't a lot of uh, privacy. Well, so, you could be waking up your, your people now with you chatting away on that phone in a loud voice. Well, You should no, be whispering. The house is empty. The house is empty because my... Assistant Lisa right. was kind enough to drive my mom to the airport this morning. Okay, where's she going? Um, mm. Well, first of all, she's going to go to New York for a couple of days. Right. And then from there, they will take the train. She will take the train to Boston, and then be going on a New England cruise. Oh, I've I've been to that um I've been to that station, Central Station. Very big, easy to get lost there. Oh boy, it <coughs> yeah. sure is. Well, I hope it's warmer than it was when I was there in, in February. Never again. My God, New York is the coldest place on the planet in February. It really no, is. It's not. Awful. Minnesota is. Is that even colder? 
Yes, you wouldn't like it here in the winter. Uh-uh. Oh, I wouldn't. Uh, see, the trouble is I don't like to turn the heating on, as you well know, Millie. Yes, I do know this. <laughs> How's our kitty cat? Kitty cat is sitting next to me, and she's um, on the chair next to me, um, curled up, and goes to sleep. She's got a new place, which is next to me in the office. If I go downstairs, she'll she'll wake up and follow me down there and sit. I think she just likes to be with me a lot of the time now. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, she's always been very close to you. She, oh, she's old you know. now, yeah. Yeah, she's quite old now. Mm. Yeah, I know it. I know. So Horrible. am I, Millie. So am I. You are not. I am. You no, 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 no. Your age is not old. Am I, am, am I making the mistake here of wishing myself older than I actually am? Yes, absolutely you I must, are. I must stop doing that. Yes, you you must stop doing that. <laughs> yeah, you very, you very definitely must stop doing Sorry, that. Sorry, Millie. Mm. All right then, my darling. Well, you have a lovely day and it's been my pleasure to call uh, for you to call in again. Oh, thanks, and you take care of yourself, and please do say hello to Tracy and Ben for me. And Send them a message. To... Send them a message on the Facebook. Just, just have a look on my friends thing, all right? Yep, I've got it. See you, Millie. Bye-bye, okay. darling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we are. Millie in uh, Minnesota, always a great pleasure to talk to her. Got to say hello to Robin this morning. Morning, Robin, who says, are you going to book me this year? I she put a little lizzydrip.com. LizzyDrip.com. Uh, Robin uh, is a drag uh, queen, female impersonator, who actually worked with Last Night in a Black Cap, uh, which is a, a venue I've uh, recently gone back to. Um, also, I have to say, and I, I left West Five, who are actually with us this morning. Someone in West Five is listening this morning as well. So good morning, West Five. Hope all is well there. Uh, yes, I've gone back to the Black Cap now. I was there. Um, if you're a regular uh, listener to the show, you'll probably know this already. I actually worked at the Black Cat for 18 years, uh, between 1989 and 2007, and I left there. And I've gone back there, uh, which is uh, rather nice, and it's strange. It's a strange thing. Going back into somewhere after you have been gone for so long. Um, the The crowd has completely changed. There wasn't a single person in there that I know from time gone by. But this is not unusual. You know, when you work in a place for a long period of time, like my, I, I do DJing in this particular, I do, as you know, I do DJing, karaoke and quiz nights. Um, when you are in somewhere, and I do tend to stay in places for a long time, I don't do like a couple of months there and then, or move on a couple of months there. I do st tend to stay in places for quite a long time. And when you when you do that, you do see the crowd constantly evolving, always changing. And the first night back I had was last Friday. So last night was was the second one back. And it's lovely. It's, there's a particular smell about this place as well. It's not an unpleasant smell. Just just I call it the black cap smell. And you walk in and and it's and it kind of it's there the smell. The place is steeped in history. So much history in there, and it was so nice going back in there to be asked again to go back there to try again to to, to give it another go. Because in all honesty, it hasn't had a good time over the last three years. Not because I've left, you know, nothing to do with it. The fact that I was there, that I left. It, it, it's had a hard time over the last six or seven years, I would say. In fact, it got to the point, uh, at some point, I think, where it would have closed. We were all surprised that it didn't actually close. However, I've gone back there just the one night a week on a Friday. I was doing four nights a week uh, 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 a while back there. I'm, I'm doing just one night a week on a Friday there. And it was very nice. It's very nice. And the thing is, the secret to to doing DJing as a long-term thing. You don't need to be the best. I'm not certainly not the best DJ in the world, okay? But I will try and evolve with the crowd. Oh, just a second. We've got another, another phone call here. Let's see what this is. 
Good morning. Who's that? Good morning, Chris. Mr. Cullen from Newcastle. Oh, good morning, Mike. <laughs> I'm just, just doing my little DJ chat there. Let, let me finish this and I'll come to you. Stay on the line, Mike, all right? Okay. It's down the line a second. Yeah, and the thing is, thing is, if you want to be a DJ long term, you must evolve with the crowd. If the crowd's tastes start changing, you must stay with it. You've got to move on. It's no point staying doing the same DJing that you did whenever you started and keeping that going because you will fall out of favour. No question about it. And I've seen this countless times where excellent DJs, excellent DJs of their time lose jobs because they won't move on with the crowd. My, my thoughts are simple. Give them what they want. If they are asking for a particular type of music, that's what you give them. Okay? Don't carry on saying, no, well, this is what I do, take it or leave it. I've had lots of people like that, I'm afraid, who have lost jobs over the years. You must constantly evolve with the cloud. Now, at the moment, I'm in a fortunate position where all the managers I work for leave me to it. It can be very, very difficult sometimes for a DJ to work if, on one hand, the crowd is telling him they want something, and on another hand, management are telling them that they want something. And you are stuck in the middle. I have been in that situation myself before. And you have to leave. You simply have to leave. I've left... Th over the years, one, two, three. Three or four, I think three or four venues where it became completely impossible because you were trying to give the crowd what they were asking for, but the manager wanted something else. And what can happen sometimes is that, manager, and I don't have any of those managers at all at the moment. Well, one a little bit. <laughs> one a little bit, but he's not too bad, okay? Um, and it just becomes impossible. What happens? I think sometimes the manager is stuck, or manageress, or manager, is stuck in their youth. And they think... What the crowd wants is what they had. Well, it's not going to happen. Number one, you're usually older. And the crowd is younger. Although saying that, there's a lot of the young, young managers and manageresses now, sort of in their early 20s. When I first started DJing, most managers were in their 40s and 50s. Now, they seem to be in their 20s, early 20s, late 20s. I don't know what, why that is. So actually, for the DJ, it's become easier. As long as you move with the crowd. If the manager's saying one thing, the crowd's saying another, you end up in a really impossible situation that you cannot please either side. And you have to leave. That's it. There's nothing you can do about it. You just have to go. Completely waste of time arguing the point, really, because the manager will have one, one narrow mind. <clears throat> you see what I mean? And the crowd want this thing. You just, you can't do it. So you have to leave and find something else. That's the way it is. Fortunately, at the moment, and more recently, I haven't had that. I've been left to it. On the other hand, if it's a young DJ who doesn't quite know what they're doing, then sometimes they need a lead, you know? They need someone to help them through. I've helped countless um, uh, younger DJs. Go, oh, Chris, I'm, I'm, I've had a bit of a problem with this, or what, this, that, or the other. And you try and help them as well. So that's my thoughts on it. So I went back to the Black Cap. Um, what I'm doing there now is almost completely different to what I was doing there uh, years ago. Although some of it's still the same. I've still got a little bit of chat you know i don't i don't <laughs> it's not like a chat show coming out to my discos you know i don't i don't talk all night and play the occasional record it is the other way around i promise you and i tend to stick to the chart stuff anything that is or has been in the charts the big difference playing out now to what i was playing years ago is that i no longer mix the tunes together 
I have found that the attention span of young people, instead of being like 10, 15 minutes long, is a very short attention span, two or three minutes. They don't want more than two or three minutes of a song, and they call them songs now, not records. Mike, I come to you in a second. I'm sorry. I'm, I know I'm going on a bit here. Not that I usually do. They want they they instead of wanting they they want two or three minutes of a song. Then they want the next one. Not only that, right? Because I know what you're saying. Some DJs now, where well, you can mix that together. Not only that, they want different beats, different. Um, they want some fast stuff and some slower stuff and some fast stuff and some slower stuff. They want this type of music, this type of music, and they want it all in the one night. So you can't mix anyway. So that's the big difference. They now want the stuff that they have heard on the radio or watched on MTV. They want that version of the song. They don't want any remixes. <clears throat> this is what I found, and that's what I've gone back into doing the Black Cap. So I'm doing now radio edits of stuff that they've heard and seen on the telly or the radio. There's no mixing. And they come up and they ask for what they want, and generally, 99% of the time, they get it. I take requests all night long. I've come across DJs who absolutely refuse point blank to take requests. I've come across DJs who actually seem to detest the very audience that they are playing for. How on earth do you think you can do a job like that? You can't. You've got to get on with everyone. I've come across I've come across racism by DJs. I had I had a DJ once come up to me and say, um, uh, "Have you got anything that hasn't got a black man singing in it?" I mean, how racist are you? And you're doing a job in front of all these people. It's disgusting, absolutely disgusting. No, you've got to get on with people. You've got to like people. You're not the be-all and end-all of it. The DJ is not the most important person in the pub. Everyone is of the same importance. A pub cannot run without a glass collector, without a cleaner, without someone to scrub the dirty old toilets out when someone's had an accident. All these people make up a club or a pub. And the DJ is not anywhere more important than anyone else so very nice going back to the black cat sad to leave another venue but sometimes you have to move on and sometimes you can go back at another point can't you all right okay mike i'm ready for you baby speak to me hello did i make you wait a long time uh, that, no, no, that's okay. That's okay because I mean, you know, I couldn't agree more with what you're saying. I mean, I was a DJ from from the age of 15 to 34, which was last year. And, are you um, 34 now? I, are you? I'm sorry. Are you 34 now, Mike? Uh, I'm 35 now. Oh, okay. But um, <clears throat> yeah, just go back to what you were saying. I mean, I couldn't really agree more with what you're saying mm. because um, back last year when I was doing it, I, you know, there was I'd noticed a, a big change in in sort of playing these long yeah sort of remixes yeah, um, yeah, yeah. than 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 the, playing the, radio the whole, edits, the, whole, the whole joke of it really mike is um uh, i'm i'm very lucky that a couple of uh, uh they're not record companies they're what are they called promotion companies you know mm -hmm. so if you've got a record you go to them please promote that they send it out to the djs not on cds anymore but on um it's, it's all online you have to download everything That's and i get great, all yeah. this music for nothing which i'm very grateful for and thank you very much you know mm -hmm. to the companies for doing this but you will get the radio edit usually and 10 other mixes right yeah. i do not play any of the mixes anymore if i try and string two or three records together as a mix that's mm -hmm. it you lose the crowd they all go and sit down or go to the bar which is not yeah. necessarily a bad thing you know if the bar's gone quiet um i'm quite good at noticing that and i'll put on a bum record everyone moves off to the bar buys a drink that's what it's yeah. about they have to sell their beer you know mm -hmm. but i just don't play the mixes anymore mike i play the, the original radio edits it's a, well, I mean, I can I can see where you're coming from because, you know, um, like I said before, back when I was doing it, it was it was all just radio edits with me, yeah. And you know, people 
if if you play like a remix of you know something by Rihanna or something like that which is about six minutes long they get bored in the first that's three right and go and sit that's down. right now it never used to go be to the bar and get a drink yeah it never used to be like that mike no 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 they would be quite happily dancing to the entire six minutes and wondering what's coming on next and you'd exactly. mix it in seamlessly and the beat would carry on now that just doesn't work anymore i just uh, you know it's it it's all changed and and you know from from doing a doing a venue in durham to doing sort of um, you know these mobile discos and stuff like that. That's why I moved into doing birthday parties, weddings, all that kind of thing. So oh, I, could, yeah. I could just play what I wanted to play. But at the same time, like you said before, people come up to you and they dictate. Yes. What the DJ plays. That's what they're playing. For. That's what they're paying for. Yeah. They? Which is <clears throat> which is fair enough. Yeah. But the DJ is there to provide a service. The DJ knows best. Yeah. Not the crowd. We're, and we're there. Stand by that. We're there to get it going, mm -hmm. and also to put the requests in the right order. Mm -hmm. You have a, an idea in your mind, sort of how it how it will go. Mm -hmm. um, you can't play any rec any. I keep calling them records. They call kids call them songs now. You can't play any song after the previous one can't be it has to kind of fit in somehow and i it's don't know I, I i don't know how i do it really it just comes into your mind you might have a little list in front of you all oh, right that go there that go there that go. and yeah. you just know i don't think i don't think it's necessarily something you can learn either unless think, you've got a flow going it's not <clears> gonna the flow that's it the flow well it's not, yeah i mean it's not gonna flow unless you know what you're gonna play and like one song's gonna flow into another one blah 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 yes. Um, but what I used to find is is that um, people used to come up to me and say, "Oh, what's this crap you've got on?" And you know, like something from the seventies. And it would be kind of like a young person from the age of probably twenty-one onwards who really wouldn't recognise the song, wouldn't appreciate it, and, would, would, and would you ask you to move on to something recent? Would you have? You can't get a happy medium. You can't get a happy medium. Well, would, would you have a full dance floor while when they come up? Or a lot of people dancing. So you've got this 70s track on, there's quite a few people dancing, and that one person comes up and tells you that your record's rubbish. I would say seven times out of ten, yes. Right, well, you just explain to them, well, have a look at the dance floor. Do you still think this is rubbish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just, just, just tell them there'll be something on for them in a minute. You can't please everyone all of the time. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the night, they will remember something good. But now, I mean, nowadays they're getting DJs who don't even take a microphone to a gig. Oh, no, 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 well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily criticise that. that. That is another sort of DJing. Mm -hmm. um, th there are many sorts, many, many sorts. And, you know, if you're booking someone, you need to book what you want. You need yeah. to, say, in a cabaret venue, for example, or a party like you're doing, birthday parties, weddings and that, yes, mm -hmm. you need to be able to use a microphone. In a club... Exactly, yeah. In a club... You might not necessarily it's need very to. Very minimal um, yeah. in a nightclub. Yeah, you know. and certainly in a bar, like yeah. sometimes they have promotions on. Sometimes I've been to venues like um, where the bar's gone dead, mm -hmm. and they say, "Oh, can you pick up the mic and tell people that for every two drinks they buy, we give them a free shot." And you tell yeah. them that, and everyone goes to the bar. So what mm -hmm. it's all about, selling money, uh, selling uh, uh, drinks as well as, you know, doing good music. And you need mm -hmm. to, you have to become part of that. The DJ must become part of that. Not separating himself from everyone else because he thinks mm -hmm. he's got bloody's gift, you know. Yeah. But as well, you've got to be a people person. You know, just like we were saying before about that guy coming up saying, oh, can you play something that's not got a black eye singing in it? That's, that's terribly racist. You just can't do that. Yeah, yeah. This was it's, a DJ. This was a DJ. It really, it's insane. Have you got something without anyone black singing in it? Exactly. That is so <laughs> you know, racist. How can you say that? How can you actually say that? It's unbelievable. It really but, is. You know, what can you do? You know, you, you can't chuck them out, can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I have been... Um, it's, it's just... In a I, ju I, just felt, going on. I yeah. just felt it was a shame that that mindset was there. That, exactly. that mindset yeah. was actually in this person's head. It was, it was about a year ago that happened. It happened twice, actually. The same person. Same person. Anyway, yeah, fights in clubs. Well, I mean, that's always happened, doesn't it? It's usually after a girl or someone's stolen a drink. Yes. Or, or picked up a wrong glass. That could happen. So easy to pick up a wrong glass. Or somebody's handed something in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I get that as well, yeah. Just get that all the time. And, oh, and, always, you know, surprises, a... always surprises me when you say things have been handed in. How many people leave a mobile phone or a wallet on the table and then come up to you later and say, has anyone handed in a phone or a wallet? And you say, well, where was it? Oh, it was just on the table while I went to the toilet. Mm -hmm. How many times have I heard that one? At least once a week, at least. Really? How st I mean, you know, I'm sorry, how stupid can you be to leave something on a table when you go to the toilet? Exactly. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you know, yeah. you, you must never, never do that. People, man, they just get so in intoxicated that they don't know what they're doing. Does, doesn't seem to happen in Rome. When I was in Rome last week, I don't know if... Did you hear the show at all last week? Uh, I watched most of it last week, but it was keep... It was keep Stopping and going, then stopping and going, so I just got fed up with it in the end, so I'll watch it back. Oh, what, was that the, um, was that the live one, was it? Yeah, the one with Ronnie oh. in it. Oh, OK, I don't, I don't know why that was. I think it was your end, because we didn't have any other complaints. He was at Morning Old Queen last week, uh, uh, last week, wasn't he? Are you on a little, are you on a slow connection there, or what? what no, you um, I'm on 30 meg broadband. Oh, that should be all right, yeah, that should mm. be all right. I was just saying... <laughs> I was just saying, Ronnie was a, was a bit of a more than old queen last week. Oh, she moans all the time, that one, dear. Because <laughs> of my bloody nerves, it does. <laughs> it's all the rushing around he does. It does annoy me. Rush, 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 all the time. Oh, God. He must Take have a fast pace life, Chris. Take it easy, man. I reckon we should move Cadbury's on. Cadbury's caramel. Cadbury's cat. yeah, take it. Mm, the rabbit. Take Here, yeah. Cadbury's chocolate. Do you eat much of that? Cadbury's chocolate, um, only if I um, take a hypo, um, for anybody who doesn't know what a hypo is, um, basically a hypo is hypoglycemia, where your blood sugar um, goes to a level where it's below normal, so like... Oh, have you, got the, um, have you got the diabetes, have you? Yes, I've had it uh, since I was 21. All oh, right, okay, okay. Can't be cured by a change in diet, no? Um, not, not mine, um, mine's, mine's type 1, so it can't be cured anymore, um, oh, you know, right. the... the the pancreas is shot, so to speak, so there's no way it can be cured. Um, is that injections or pills? I'm on injections. Oh, OK. Huh? I'm not being a horrible about one. What's she say? <laughs> is that the girlfriend? <laughs> Tell her to shut up when you're on the phone. I know. Shut up. It's her. It's her. Throw something at her. It's her. That's shut up, you that. old bag. That's Cordelia. <laughs> that was on last week. <laughs> Good morning, Cordelia. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, what was I saying? Yes, about about um, mm. yeah. There's 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 no treatment other than just taking injections. Ah oh, right, okay. Um, but I mean, I manage it well. It's all right, you know. Do I can, keep, I, can do I can still see. I'm not blind yet. So do you keep an eye on um, uh, new treatments and that? Do you, do you watch that yourself or or not? Um, not, not investigations. What's it? What's it? They look, when they're looking for for things to help it along. New treat, yeah, new treatments. <clears throat> Do you keep there's, an eye on that or not? There's different things that you have to um, go through, which is um, eye tests. You know, they have to um, yes. put drops in, in inside your eyes. So oh, they yes, can I've take had that. Yes, yeah. So they can take a photograph of the back of your eyes, and what happens is the drops go in, go in your eyes, and they dilate the pupil. Yeah. Um, so they can take a photograph of the back of your eye to see if there's any damage being I done. I know. Yeah, I had um, that once. Um, I don't have di I have something else. Um, but not diabetes, mm. and I had these drops in my eyes a couple of years ago. Um, oh, to see yeah. if I think it was a w it was a danger of retina detaching, but it oh, wasn't. Right. It wasn't, and then once the pills started working, they weren't worried about that anymore. So yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, apart from that, you've got to go for uh, liver tests, kidney function tests. Yeah. And you've got to have um, your blood sugars taken every. Um, I think it's every three months I um, get it done, which is called the HbA1c. Right. Um, <clears throat> well, that's the that's the medical term, you know, um, for it. Uh, and nine times out of ten, it just comes back normal, so I'm okay. fine. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely fine. Cool. All right, Mike. Well, nice to talk to you, sir. Okay. Sorry, can I just ask one yes. more question? Yes, of course you can. Okay. Right. I don't um, lend money to anyone, I'm sorry. Bye-bye. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I said, you said, dude, can I ask you a question? I said, yes, you can. But no, I don't lend money to anyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Mike, what? You, I mean, 
I'm going to say, you've been DJing since I've got to know you back in 2004. Yeah. How how do you think how do you think it's changed from when you started doing it up to the present day, 2013? What 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 aspects have changed? Um, What's been a major change for you? Well, the music constantly changes. Yes. Okay, and you need to keep up with that, and you mm -hmm. need to keep up the way that it's played. For example, mm -hmm. I said to you I was mixing. I started on seven inches, moved on to twelve, moved on to CDs. Then I started mixing, and now we've yes. almost gone back to playing seven inches again. It's radio edits of many different types of music rather than one type all night long. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. The other thing is the computer. You know. Yes. Yeah. I when I was doing mobile discos, I had. Ten boxes of records that I would mm -hmm. carry around in a transit van from place to place, playing and a couple of record players and all that business. Now all this and more mm -hmm. is in my little Lenovo laptop. I have God knows how many hundred boxes of records on there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and of course that that is also the mixer is everything in that one laptop so it's a lot easier to move from place to place it simply goes over my shoulder and back in the car and comes mm -hmm. back out of the car and sits in the house with me at night That's it's it. remarkable how much things have changed from, oh yes yes you know when i started doing it in 90 oh my god when was i 15 maybe three right yeah i Up started um last year 63, 73, 83. I started in 83, 82. I think 81, 1980. 80 or 81, yeah. Quite a while now, isn't it? I was only two then. Eh? Hey? Was you two? I was only two. Well, you could have come and helped me carry the boxes in and out. <laughs> <laughs> not at that age. Surely not. <laughs> oh, Chris, it's been great speaking to you. Yeah, you to... too, Mike. Good luck, my friend. Nice to chat okay, to you. Okay, then. Thanks very much, Chris. Cheerio. Bye-bye, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye. I'm just telling you, yes, um, also with us today is uh, Robin, also known as Lizzie Drip, who does an excellent drag show. I was working with him last night at the Black Cap. Fantastic. Great atmosphere in there as well, I must say. And uh, I'm very pleased to be back at the uh, Black Cap on Friday night. So if you, if you ever want a night out, you want a little bit of a... Why am I still holding the phone? If you ever want a night out... Um, you fancy a little bit of a dance and a cabaret show as well, which was usually a dr either a drag sing a drag queen or a singer or a mixture of both. Then come along to the Black Cap, okay? Friday nights, 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. I think it's about three or four pounds uh, entrance fee, and that's on Camden High Street, okay? Fairly mixed in there, gay and straight. All right. Everyone's welcome. Once again, Friday nights at the Black Cap, 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Me doing the music and some sort of cabaret artist as well. And if you want to book Lizzie Drip, her um, website is lizzydrip.com. Have I got that right? <coughs> Hope so. One minute. Lizzydrip.com. Good morning to uh, my nephew, Jimmy Butler, who's just finished work and is also with us this morning. Good morning, Jimmy. He does um, car bodywork, you know, rubs down bodywork and does the painting and all that business. Very clever, very clever. Don't forget the email address of the show, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Someone sent in a little voice message here. Uh, John Springate, who is also a singer in Port Talbot in Welsh Wales. In from the valley. Are you from the valley? He sent in a little message from... Uh, which unfortunately can i listen to this before I, yes i can actually let me just listen to this before i play it because i don't know what what's on it or maybe i can't no i can't i'm just gonna play it out i could if i plugged in there oh, i can't be bothered let's just play this little message from john and see what he's got to say is there nothing oh maybe there isn't one. Oh, hang on no i've got the, got the wrong button here i don't know what i'm doing here today yeah try this does this work it's John Springate here. Just to let you know, I'm alive. <laughs> I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Is that it? John Springate there. Another one of my showbiz celebrity friends. He used to play in the Glitter Band. Do you remember the Glitter Band? Yes, that's John there. He used to play. I think he's with us this morning as well. Thank you, um, uh, John. Hello to Marge. Who says, on the subject of... Um, oh, he, oh, he's ringing in now. He's ringing in. Good morning, John. 
Good morning. How are you? All right. I'll have to decline your video because it might use too much bandwidth. Okay, fine. No problem. Good morning, John. You are live on air. How exciting is this? Well, yes, it's been a long time since I've been on air. Take, <laughs> takes you back to the days of Top of the Pops. Ba -ba, ba -ba, oh, da -da, yes. da -da, da. What's it like being on Top of the Pops, John? Very tiring. Was it? <laughs> Because when we saw Top of the Pops on the telly, I mean, I, I was always watching it in the 70s and 80s. And then I kinda, it kind of lost its way, I think, it, towards the end of the 80s. And everyone was miming then, weren't they? Yeah. We, were when, you we were, when we were doing I mean, their last, I think I remember their last Top of the Pops appearance as the Glitter Band was 1977. Okay. Um, and uh, we were doing people like you and people like me. Now this is this is a good uh, uh, you know sort of example of the time, because punk came in because we were doing stuff which was very sort of radio one friendly you know and uh, I think we you know sort of lost the pop but but also the audiences at top of the pops were just so bored. If you if you look at on top of the pops is <laughs> around about the nineteen seventy eight period. Yeah. You you'll see you know you'll see people just standing around. In fact. Uh, the, the guy who was actually producing the show, I remember, came down once and he said, come on, this is your show, you should be enjoying yourselves. And everyone was going, what? You know, <laughs> they, were just, they were just so bored with it. And then, you know, then, then punk came in and it just wiped the floor, you know, it just right. wiped it all away. And suddenly it, it did perk up, you know, it became a bit more interesting. And, um, you know, a lot of bands wanting to play live and stuff like that. So it just, it gave you a little bit more of a, you know, a boost, if you like, you know, so there we are. <laughs> were, were you, at the time, were you singing all live or had miming started then? Because it, it wasn't always there, miming, was it? Well, it, well, it was actually. But what the what happened then? You see, if you remember, in those days, the 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 unions were very strong, and the musicians' union um, had a criteria which meant that if you were doing Top of the Pops, you had to go in and record a backing track the the day before to show that you were the musicians on the record. You oh, see. Okay. Yeah. You know, so for us, it was a, a, a total annoyance because I, I remember once, I mean, we got Top of the Pops and we had to come down from Glasgow the night before, down into the studio in the morning, 7.30 in the morning, to record. The, the funny thing about all this was we used to have this um, a representative from the Musicians' Union yes. and he's, we all called him Dr. Death. His name was Dr. <laughs> Death. <Devin. laughs> <laughs> Don't know why you got the name for that. But anyway, he used to sit there and listen to the session. I mean, you gotta remember these records took about two or three days to make it. And then they wanted us to do it in three hours. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So um so anyway, we'd do the track, but what would generally happen was he would you know, before the end of the session while they were mixing, he'd go up to the toilet and what they do is they switch the they switch the tapes. And they said, you know, right, well this is the backing track and it was the backing track of the actual record itself. You know, so um you know, so so yeah, I mean the the only um the only real live thing on the show was when they used to have the Top of the Pops Orchestra, which they, you know, once again, the U union sort of said, well, look, you know, we've got to get, keep uh, musicians in, in work. So what they used to do, they used to use the, the, ba the, the band itself to do, you know, the latest record maybe from, you know, a, a group or a, an artist which required backing, you know, strings and stuff like that, yes. you know. So they, they used to bring out their own albums, didn't they? Do you remember the Top of the Pops oh, albums? The Pops oh, they weren't. Yeah. They weren't bad, and they were all right, you know, at the time. But yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, the DJ would never play them. No, you know, you'd no, never get a DJ play one of those. And of course, Pan's people. You know, Pan's Pan's people, people, yeah, yeah. You, you must have met all of them. They, they're all in their sixties now and again. They still pop up on the telly, don't they? In like an interview show they or do. something like they that. They do. It's Who, quite funny because we, we were doing a top of the pots with uh, Paul McCartney, and he, he was on it, and uh, and all, and they all came up to watch them rehearse. Every every used to come up and watch Pan's people rehearse. All the lads. Yeah, of course. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Who were the ones are. after Pans? Oh, New Edition. It was New Edition after Pans, people, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Um, were they yes, the I'm... same? Were they the same New Edition that worked with Mike Bat on the um, uh, Seaside Special theme tunes? Oh, I, I was Mike really Bat don't and know, New Chris. Edition. I wonder if it was... got me that. Got me on that one. I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because I used to love Seaside Special. 
I mean, it was so cheesy, it was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I, I didn't really see much of that because I think I was working at the time. I mean, you know, there was a period in my life where I didn't really see a lot of TV because we were constantly touring and, yeah. and stuff like that, you know. You never did Seaside Special, no? I think I saw a, probably a couple of episodes of it. You, um, didn't, you didn't do it, no? I don't think we did. I can't remember doing that big, one. Big, um, big we circus. did most of them. Big Circus Topic was in. Yeah, no, no, we didn't do it. No, no, I would have remembered that, definitely. Yeah. I, but, I often uh, look on the YouTube and you type in, I mean, when, when you get a chance, type in um, uh, Seaside Special Three Degrees. I will, so I will, definitely. Thing, is the campus thing, it was all sparkly and glittery, <laughs> and they're all, of course, you're doing the hand actions, and it's, of course it's all live. Yeah. yeah. They've got, and you, you'll remember, the long, thin, silver microphones with the wire. I don't know what they were. Yeah. And they've all got these on the telly at that point before the wonders of wireless, of course, you know. Yeah. Wireless microphones. But you're still busy now, aren't you, John? I'm still, yeah, I'm still doing stuff. Um, I'm still doing some writing and also um, I'm just getting back into doing remix stuff now. I mean, I, 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 I went a bit quiet for a while. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, dra gradually getting myself uh, in front of the computer and starting, starting up again. And it was very interesting what you were saying about all these, you know, these companies that do so many remixes. I mean, I, I feel like you, it's like, do do they really need to do that many? No. It's you know it's it's ridiculous. I mean, maybe three or four different it's, flavors. It's you also know. it's also a real pain. Yeah. You know, I, when when these promotional companies, which again I bow my head down, very grateful for the music that they send out, but hmm. you'll have perhaps, um, and I haven't done them this week yet. You know, right. I've got to do still do mine. So I might have twenty twenty five tracks waiting to be listened to and yeah. reacted on uh boys and girls when, when i say reacted on what happens is that for each track i have to send a little form in saying what i think what i think the the, the audience reaction will be or indeed what the audience reaction was if i played it and, and and give it marks out of 10 and all that i have to do that for every track now if each track has eight mixes and you're supposed <laughs> to listen to every one of them you it's just impossible to do yeah. It is impossible to do. What you want is a radio edit, an extended radio edit, and one other mix. I think that's all you need, really. Some yeah. of these have got ten, and, and, it, and it comes out with, you know, da da da, and in brackets, full remix package. <laughs> now, I don't really want that full remix package. I mean, you can't go back to them and say that, you know, in, in, in fear that you might upset them. Oh, we'll take him off the list then. You know, because yeah. you don't want that. No. But on the other hand, you, you really don't want ten mixes, or, or, yeah. or even six mixes of the same song. You're supposed to listen to each one. Of course, I don't believe for one moment that anyone, anywhere, listens to the whole mix. What they probably do is move the mouse along, listen a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. But it all takes time, you know, and you just, if, if, if you're lucky, and I am very lucky to be working as much as I am, you haven't got time to listen to all this stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I can imagine. Yeah, it's just impossible. But yeah. do, do you, you? So you still play out? You you play out with the band or on your own? I'm still. Or both? I'm, do, you know, funnily enough, I'm I'm appearing at a, a festival tonight called the Undercover Festival, which is in Woking. Um, oh, it's just down the road from me. Is it? All oh, right. Okay. I'm, I'm in Bracknell, aren't I? I'm in Bracknell. All oh, right. Do you know but, Bracknell. But, but, Put you on the guest list then, uh, Chris. Oh, I'd love yeah. to. I'm doing, a, I'm, doing, I'm doing a karaoke night tomorrow. I don't know if the singing will be as good as it yours. Right. But, I mean, there, there'll be some bloody good singers and some really bad ones, but that's what karaoke is all about. We don't care. So uh, that's it, you know. But uh, I, would, I would... What time is it, John? Well, we're on stage around, around about quarter to ten. Oh, um, yeah. So uh, there's quite a few bands on, so we, we've all got a time slot, so everybody's trying to, oh, um, you know, accommodate and try and keep on time. So um, so I'm, I'm heading down there around, around about three o'clock. I'm, I'm actually living in Wales these days. Yeah, Port Talbot, yeah. In yeah, West Wales. With Will Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Why I'm here, I do not know, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> who else is on? Who else is on in Woking? In, in um, Woking? There's nothing really of any sort of real name value. Um, I, think, I think there's one or two sort of uh, ex-punk bands from the eighties. Right. Um, nice and I, I've got. I'm just trying desperately to look for the schedule okay. now, but I haven't got it. 
I haven't got the, the list of the bands, unfortunately, but there's quite a few bands on. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, I think it's a two day event. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, it should be, should be good. Should be a lot of fun. Lovely. So, um, looking forward to that one. That's good. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, did you, did you know Chris Parker from the Hollies? No, I didn't know. Oh, you didn't. I was working with him for a while as well. He was in, um, uh, uh, West Five, where I was working on West Five. He's, he's still there. He does, uh, the, they have a piano bar in this place, Kneeling, called West Five. Oh, right. Where I was working on Fridays. And he yeah. plays the piano in there. And he is the best, um, pianist that they've got in there. and of course he sings it brings his own system and you know if, if if you're an artist and you've got your own system generally it's better than the system in the club right you know right. and he brings his own one in there his little um uh, drum uh, machine thing and yeah you know, he's really good sound he's got he's got right. a really good sound oh yeah yeah and he's fantastic such a nice person ian parker he's always touring and doing stuff everywhere right you know <laughs> and he of course he was in the hollies lovely man lovely man um robin says do you know robin dearden he says you used to live in in spain is that right that's right yes yeah <laughs> yeah did you know robin at all lizzie robin. lizzie drip drag queen oh yes yes oh you did <laughs> yes no well yes okay give him my regards and i've got this list here Dread Zone, The Rejects, The Skints, Band, stone foundation brompton mix these were all people on with you i think Oh, right. Loads okay, of them good. here. I don't know any of them. Hang on, let's have a look. <laughs> the Vulgarites. Vulgarites, I love it. The Vulgarites. That's a good name, isn't it? <laughs> and there you are, the glitter. The glitter's there as well. Glitter's, yeah. The glitter's. So, should be fun. Should be good. So, I better, I better get myself together then, Chris. It's no good. All right, John, lovely to talk to you. Thanks and so you. much for calling uh, And, and no... all the very best for, for, for being back at, at, at the Black Cat. Uh, perhaps you, you, we'll get you down, but maybe they'll get you down there one day. It's not, it's nothing to do with me, of course, but um, yeah. that'd be nice to do one again together. You know. Well, I was I was down there about two, two weeks ago at the Energize um, oh, yes, 20th yes, the, birthday uh, bash, and yeah. do you know what? What really sort of surprised me <laughs> was um, that, um, like the Vauxhall, um, nothing. Changes. If you put if you put another if you put another coat of paint on the in the dressing room, you wouldn't be able to move. No, no. <laughs> and nothing ever changes, does it? Do you notice? It doesn't. No. Do you notice, John, the black cap smell? No, I didn't you actually. I, it's it's okay. funny you should say that because I, I was thinking, oh, it's really smelly. But then, next time I go in, I will. I will definitely put uh, my my nose to the floor. <laughs> yes, there's a definite smell in there, which, which is not unpleasant, you know, it's just the black cap smell, so to speak, you know. Right, right. Oh, I'll check that one out. But I've, 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 I will try and come along and, and, and see you sometime, Chris. It'd be Brilliant. great to catch up. Brilliant. Have a good gig tonight, John. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, all the best. Luck. Cheerio now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we are, John Springgate from the Glitter Band. There are some nice calls coming in today, isn't there, I must say. Thanks, John. I do appreciate you uh, uh, calling in and giving us this little insight into the Top of the Pops. We always thought it was such a great thing to go to, and I remember um, being at school, and and people were always going, "Oh, I'd love to go to Top of the Pops and all this business." You know, let's do some messages. Don't forget the email address if you want to join in at any time. My email address is Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Right, Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Uh, Marge says good morning on the subject of your toilet because I say I only flush it once a day, which is. It's a little bit of a lie. I do flush it a bit more. But Marge says, if the toilet is yellow, just keep it mellow, meaning don't flush it. <laughs> uh, Marge wants to say, why did you leave the black cap in 2007? Um, it was time to move. I didn't feel at the time I was getting the support behind me. If you see what I mean. There were certain things there that weren't weren't done properly. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. If I'm not happy with something, I'll have to say something, you know. Look, you need to be doing this or you need to be doing that. That wasn't happening. And I gave up. In the end, I gave up and thought, oh, it's just pointless. And another job came along, so that was it. I went, that's why, really. You need the support behind you. It's like I said to you right at the beginning of the show, you know, the DJ is not the most important thing. We can't do it on our own. OK? We absolutely can't do Simon, I've just got you on hold for a second. I'll be with you in a second. Um, you know, you, you can't do it on your own. 
running a club, a bar, anything like this. It's many things that come together. And if you feel like, well, there's no one working with me anymore, it's you and them, then it just becomes, again, impossible to do the job. I, was, I had no backup at the time in 2007, none at all. Whereas now, once again, and I didn't, I, it got to the point where I, thought, I don't feel part of this team anymore. So I went. I've gone back there, and I really do, at this moment in time, feel part of the team there. It's important to feel part of it, not just go in and do the job and come back out again. That being said, you don't want to get too involved in politics or anything like that. It's good to be part of a team and everyone working together. And I certainly do feel like that at the moment. Let's go over to the Isle of Wight. And um, Simon's, I think it's Simon today. Good morning, Simon. Hello, how are you doing, Chris? Hello, Simon. Is that a picture of Tina Turner with you there? That, that funny enough, talking of, <laughs> talking of pop festivals and what have you, yeah. that was actually taken at a thing on the Isle of Wight called Faux Fest. Good Which, God, uh, is, that, is that Tina Turner? No, it's not, because Faux Fest is uh, French for fake fest. So the, 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 there you go, that will tell you. It's a, okay. It was, it was a Tina Turner impersonator. But Tina must, Turner tribute, they call them, tribute. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I must say she was damn good. Yes, yeah. a lot. most of them are. Um, yeah, the, she, there's another she one. She was on stage and sort of strutting her stuff both in... I, 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 guess, I guess if you're... Um, an impersonator or, or what have you, a tribute, you, you obviously study your subject, don't you? Yes, you do. Um, you, must, you must do, but, yeah. But no, when she was on stage strutting her stuff, she, um, well, I mean, so you, she, she, could, she could have been her, you know? I don't, I don't think it's just, it's, it's not just the way you sing. If you're going to be a tribute act, you've got to weigh how they act, how they move their hands, their legs, everything. You know, it's just not, you, you can't just go on and look like the the artist you've got to go on and be the artist and, and i must um, say funny enough it, it's strange how um obviously this is how shows sort of radio shows work isn't it funny you mentioned tina turner because of that photo years ago before i was saddled i mean before i was blessed with the kids um i went on a tour of germany with our local social club yeah and I'm, I'm of course now talking and trying it doesn't matter what region it was but it's in the rhine valley somewhere can't quite remember the village we stayed at but on the last night that we were there we we, we had sort of like dinner in the sort of like cabaret room like the ballroom yes like, you know yes and there was this german band played and, and they were all right they were doing covers of english hits and what have you who were they oh i've no idea they were they would have just been you know a bit like what we have on the isle of Wight. you know it just would have been a session Festival group thing, that yeah. they yeah. get in for entertainment yeah. for coach parties you know nothing yeah. famous um but that in the sort of like um in the middle of their set they had a woman that come on and she was the same and she sounded exactly like tina turner what wasn't um wasn't a tribute yeah it wasn't pretending to be you know because she didn't sort of particularly look like her but blimey if you shut your eyes um you would have thought it was her and she went down a storm because it was mainly english people in this hotel yeah and uh no i'll always remember that it was absolutely phenomenal you know the band were average you know they're right for what they were have a couple of german what were they things. doing covers or, or their own stuff no covers okay uh, basically. Yep. um but no no so uh so, so she's much impersonated but no i wish it had have been the real person but unfortunately not yeah i would i would love to have been in a band um i mean i play i play piano um really just just for myself you know i'm not particularly good at playing the piano um i certainly can't read music or anything like that um but i would love shania to would teach you she can she can read music who uh, shania shania my daughter she could teach you Sh how to read shania music. Mm. you've never mentioned her before i know the other one that's the only one <laughs> shania oh shania stupid. Yeah. oh i'm stupid i thought you said shania then no, with a g no. Do I try and, do me. try and speak more 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 effectively, please. <laughs> oh, one is very sorry, Chris. Shania, did did are you listening to the is Shania listening to the phone or the computer? No, she's doing women's work. She's out with the other half doing the job. <gasps> women's work. Don't let us hear you say that. They go mad. These women want you. You can't say that anymore. No, Tre women's treat work. Treat me, keep them keen, Chris. That's what I say. <laughs> 
I don't think there's a... I would love to have been in a band, like, you know, playing the bass or something like that, or the drums, but um, no, it's some, something I didn't do. We all, you all have to... Do, do you know, I was talking to this young lad in um, the co-op the other day, uh, on the till. <clears throat> Can't remember what it was. Uh, yes, I do. I was telling him about my nephew, um, who who now fixes cars for a living. When I say fixes them, he does the the body work. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So if there's a dent or something like that, he he um, pulls it out or puts something in it. and rub- I don't know how it all works, but that's what he does. And I said, he said, is he good at that? And I said, yes, he is. Uh, I, says, I said, it's all about finding what you're good at. You know, and I says, what are you good at? He said, well, I can make a computer. I said, you mean oh, yeah. build one from scratch? He said, yeah. He said, might take me a while, but I can, I can build a computer and usually fix programs and things like that. I said, well, that's your thing. You know, I wouldn't be very good at that. I, I, I can't play football. I can't paint a picture. You know, there's things I can do. But I can sit here and talk. <laughs> you know, yeah. And you have to find, when you're young, hopefully, what you're good at. Or what, not necessarily that good. I don't, you know, I've, I've never really thought I'm particularly good at anything. But there are things I can do. Yeah. I don't know, I've, I've been trying for 47 years to try and find something that I'm good at. I don't, I don't think I've managed it yet. 47 years? I'm looking at your photo. You look a lot older than that, mate. Yeah, thanks, Chris. <laughs> I needed that, mate. I really needed that. I've had a, I've had a bad weekend, as it is. Have you? Oh, has it all gone wrong, has it? Oh, I could bore, but I do on my radio show. I bore people to death with it, but I've, my brother-in-law was very kind to give me a car in May. Oh, yeah? I, what what was I, it? My my car sort of failed its MOT miserably, and he knew, yeah. like, like all of us, I was a bit stuck financially. But he gave me a Vauxhall Astra, and, oh, it's quite nice. It's in quite good condition. It's oh, okay, a, yeah. I don't know, it's an yeah. SXI or something. But it's been the most unreliable car I've oh, ever really? had the misfortune to run in my life. Oh, gosh. Now I've been off the road for about four weeks because it's had some ECU problem, and they put £300 of parts on it, and it still ain't out of the garage. It's still playing oh. up. Well. I, had, um, I had an Astra few years ago as a what do you call it a backup car um, a, a, yeah no what is it now a courtesy car courtesy car oh courtesy yes yeah car. hated it yeah uh, this thing i'm hating this one now and, you know at the time i had a little toyota i go and this bloody great red tank turned up mm. and it was just so big and clunky and it was big in places and you kind of thought well, why does that stick out there you know the wings were sticking <laughs> right out i thought well what have they put under there to make those wings stick out so much mm. and it was just i hated it Vauxhall astra i absolutely hated it people Not say only... that to me people say that to me <gasps> on big in places <laughs> now stop it this is a family-based program Sorry. Yeah, quite right. <laughs> now, the re- reason why I Skyped in, just in case um, people are interested, is next weekend, if I get my car back, you'll never guess where I'm going. Go on, where? Guess. I'm going to Prestatin, Boyle. Oh, the Pontins? Yeah, believe it or not, they've got, um, they've got a thing going on there because it's 30 years, evidently, since they made Holiday on the Buses at Pontins in Prestatin. Oh, yeah. Da, so, da, da, da. I love on the buses. I yeah, that's it. right. Well, I'm a, I'm a, I sort of liked the group ages ago on Facebook. There's sort of like a fan sort of like page for it. Is it is it still run by Pontins, that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because and, Pontins, um, I remember when I was a child, and I know you, you, you know this, I've often talked about it, we, we went on holiday to Pontins every year, a, a oh, different yeah, one yeah. in the country, and at the time there was a, a big catalogue of, of all these places, well, I say a catalogue, you know, a holiday brochure um, of all the little holiday camps that they had. This is now much smaller, and it's, it's almost very sad, really. Um, I think the, the other holiday camps are still going, but they've been bought by various other people and, and changed and this that and the other and pontins is actually very small now there's there's, there's nothing like they used to be but yeah. um, we had great holidays at pontins sometimes as a child i think it's certainly in my teenagers i was very ungrateful very very ungrateful oh yeah teenagers are very ungrateful chris i was very, so ungrateful very ungrateful to my mother and the father uh, for taking me on such wonderful holidays and of course you get older and uh, you regret being as you were then but you can't turn the clock back, you know, there's nothing no, you can do about no. it. Now, of course, I appreciate all these things that they used to do. 
Yeah, uh, that's really right. do. But we had wonderful holidays at Pontins, but sadly, you know, not not as big as the company was. I'd, I'd like to go on one again. I've tried to get people to go to me on a Pontins holiday, but no one seems to be interested. Certainly not my best mate Ron, who's just got his nose too far in the air to go on. Such oh, a well, oh well, no. If he's into the painted uh, ceilings oh, on the back, and he's not really going to be into Pontins. No, he? he's not really into Pontins. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. so we'll have to see what it's like. It's, it's either going to be quite an eccentric, really um, funny weekend because they've got a coach tour going of all the of all the places they filmed yes. in the locality. You know, like where um, Olive and Arthur lost all their luggage on the. Uh, I don't know if you remember the. Yeah, film. of course I remember that. There was a girl, oh, I was a bit naughty last night at the um, at the Black Cat where I was DJing. There was this girl who had glasses on. She'd come up to the stage and ask for a request. I was like, oh, we're playing this one for so and so over there, and I says, um, oh. Have you ever seen on the buses? <laughs> and there was another crowd over to the left, a little bit older, you know, who immediately burst into laughter and knew exactly what I was saying. <laughs> well, well, hopefully she had the thick weekend. glasses on and everything, she had this girl. Hopefully next weekend, it's not guaranteed, but Anna Karen, who played that character, she should be there. So. Oh, right, yeah. She must be, oh, she's got to be in her 60s or 70s now, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, she, she, uh, she must be, but um, I it's, met it's quite... Quite funny, because through um, Vectus Radio, name-dropping, as yep. I do, um, the program controller there calls me and Elaine. Elaine's like my partner. Oh, really? Um, he calls her Olive and me Arthur, because he reckons we bicker <laughs> so much that we're like the real-life <laughs> incarnation of them. Is Vectus, <laughs> is that an FM station or just uh, internet? No, unfortunately, it's, um, it's just internet. I think where we are on the island, the likelihood of getting an FM licence, A, is very expensive. Yeah, and B, it's, it's very unlikely that we get it because we uh, we've got a commercial station called Isle of Wight <laughs> Radio, right. and um, we, we've also got something that a name escapes me now. It's for sort of like plays real sort of old tunes. Um, oh, Angel right, yeah. FM, I think. Is there a, is there a multiplex on there or not? Um, not, not on our station, no, because it's the same sort of thing, really. It's run sort of a bit on a wig and a prayer, you know, like we, so we, we get enough advertising in to run from a... No, 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 sorry, sorry, uh, DAB, do you have DAB on the island? Uh, well, we do, if, you, if you're lucky enough to be able to pick it up. I bought my dear, uh, beloved partner, uh, Digital Radio. Luckily, it's an FM one as well for right, Christmas. Right, it doesn't work, no. And you don't get a thing, not one single solitary no, station. No, I mean, I had, I had, uh, I've got it with me, actually. I, I've got this little, um, I, I took it out in the end. I've got this pure highway. Um, funnily enough, it's right in front of me here because I'm going to sell it on eBay. I've got this pure highway, um, DAB, uh, uh, converter thing oh yeah um which kind of works with your radio and i was very disappointed at the performance you know i i because i listened to lbc a lot and i could go almost all the way down to brighton lbc is a talk station in london and i used to go all the way down to brighton um and i could pick it up on and off you know with the jab yeah. it cuts out even before you left the m25 yeah, I think the trouble, I think the trouble station, on the right? island is where it's a very hilly area you know our geography you know yeah, yeah. Well, that sort of plays havoc with it sort of um anyway you know mm. um because a lot of people i talk to you know i bore them to death about sort of um that's just like yeah do you happens. really <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the first thing they say is oh well that's just internet radio but it doesn't faze me at all because but through a mixture of the fact that fm's quite difficult yeah. to get in I just, where I live I just wish uh, they'd pushed the internet radios a bit more I've got one myself a Roberts very expensive you know over a hundred pounds you know and when you can pick up a radio for 20 quid what chance have you ever got of, of, of pushing right. you know but um, they, they must if, if they sold more they would come down in price but they're just not pushed the fact you can you can go out boys and girls if you've got Wi-Fi in the house you can go out and buy an internet radio right and you can get thousands of stations on this thing from right, all yeah. over the world probably including vectors is that right oh yes yes yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that, that's a, hundreds that's a... and thousands of stations on here but the the, 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 the the fact the fact that these things exist you never ever see internet radios advertised do you Only no I have, a fu- I have a funny feeling i don't know if i'm right but i think digital radio is a bit of a damp squid i have a feeling that in a few years time I think you'll find that perhaps internet radio will be perhaps listened to or perhaps more popular yes, than digital yeah. radio. Yeah, you're quite right. Well. Anyway, nice to talk to you there, Simon. Yes, and you, and, and give Ron a big hug for me. I yeah. think he's a legend. Say hello to your daughter from me as well. 
Yeah, well, do. See you that's, then, Chris. That's Simo, not Gimon. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Ta-da, bye-bye now. Uh, not Simone, Shania. I'm thinking of Simon. I f- I'm sure he said Gamaya at the first. I'm having, having trouble hearing him. Thanks for that. Uh, got some emails here to read out. First, uh, from lovely Marge, who sent this in um, the week before last, actually, but we didn't have time to get to it because we, we kind of run out of time. Marge says, uh, glad you had a wonderful va- vacation in, uh, in Rome with Ronnie. I enjoyed your videos that you posted on Facebook while there. Um, yes, we, d- we did a lot of uh, little, just little two-minute videos, you know, on the iPhone while we were there. Because the iPhone's a wonderful little thing. I've got, um, I've got the new operating system. Where is it now on the iPhone? New operating system. Let me see. New, new operating system on iPhone, which is working quite nicely. The i Was it i07 it's called, isn't it? i07, that, that's working well. Put that back there. Um, and we did lots of little videos and put it on our Facebook wall. Uh, by the way, if, you, if you're not with us on Facebook, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK, all right? So facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Join us on there and you get all the little updates and all bits and pieces. Marge says, I haven't been to many places out of the USA, except about when I was eight years old in 1968, my family went to Alaska. Oh, it's cold there, Marge. Oh, you wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be going to Alaska. Far, far too cold for me, my dear. We drove from Texas to Alaska for about three or four week vacation. I saw many states along the way. Canadians were very friendly and one person actually got in the car with us to give us directions. Oh, be careful you get in the car, Marge, dear. You never know who's getting in the car. Well, you must be careful, Marge. Honestly. My aunt did this the other day. She did something like that, where she said she was standing at a bus stop. And she'd been there a while, and this car pulled up. A gentleman um, in his sort of middle age, middle middle to sort of, around about 55, I think she was, 55 to 60. And he says, where are you going? She, so she says, oh, I'm waiting for the bus to go. To, oh, jump in the car, I'll, I'll give you a lift there. And she got in the car. She got in the car with a man that she'd never known before. My aunt, Brenda, Auntie Brenda. So I had to tell her off, dear. I said, you must be mad. You see, but that's, that's the generation. She's 70, 75, 76, something like that. And that generation, you could trust, but I think you trusted people more then. Isn't it a shame that we can't do that now? Trust people so much. Um, Marge says, those days, though, crime isn't like it is today. Yes, that is true enough, I think. I have been to uh, Juarez, spelt J-U-A-R-E-Z, Juarez, old Mexico, and it was a bit nervous going there. I was told stories that the bandoleros would come down out of the hills and kidnap young girls for use as slaves. I was a kid, so believed everything I was told me. Yes, you would be a slave. You would be forced to do washing and cooking for the rest of your life. Well, same as being a wife, really, then, isn't it? You know, isn't it? She says, you didn't answer the question, who was holding the camera as you took the video of you saying goodnight and by as Ron as you walked home alone in the dark? It didn't seem like Ron was holding the camera. Uh, again, this would be one of the little Facebook videos that I put on uh, on our holiday in Rome. Yeah, well, I must have missed that question. The only thing is, Marge, sometimes you put so many questions on there all the time, my dear, that I, can't, I, don't, I, I miss some of them. It gets very complicated sometimes with, with so many questions. I do my best. Who was holding the camera? It was Ron's boyfriend. He was holding the camera. Because he picked him up from the airport and I was just dumped on the side of the street to get home alone. Do you know, I'm, gonna, I'm sure I'm going to sneeze in a minute. Oh, dear. I think I might need to have an antihistamine tablet. Marge says, I get nervous, as you do, when I go to a big city, even our city, Oklahoma. Uh it makes me nervous. I feel like when I'm not sure what direction I'm going in or familiar with the surroundings that I cannot find my way home, my comfort zone is lost. Do you feel that way? Yes. Yes. 
I get lost very, very easily. It's, and it's, it, I, it has always been like that, Marge. And I get so frightened that I'm never going to find my way home again. I get absolutely terrified. In a foreign country, it's even worse. And worse still, a foreign country where they don't speak English. Even worse. So, yes, I do worry about getting lost. In fact, I've kind of decided when I take my nephew to uh, Florida, we're going to do it by shuttles and cabs. I don't think I'm going to hire a car because I'm I just so nervous about getting lost all the time. Although it's quite easy in America driving because the, the, the roads tend to be in straight lines. Right? You look at map of Rome, it's really complicated. Really complicated. And we had great difficulty finding our way about there. So I think uh, in, in the States we're going to be getting shuttles and probably get cabs to places. How was Katie about you leaving her? And who cared for her while you were away since Ron was with you? Was it his boyfriend? No. No, uh, my dear neighbour, because I've got great neighbours, Dave and Karen live next door to me. And they looked after Katie and, and popped in. They, have, they popped in the house and give her cuddles and, and food and that sort of thing. She's actually, at, the moment, she, at this very moment, she's curled up next to me on the chair next to me, which she can't see. Been cooler this week here, and the weatherman says it will continue to do as the month goes on. Well, we've been cold, but the, the, we're going to get a bit of an Indian summer, and the temperature's going to pick right up uh, from from this afternoon, actually. I'm already quite warm here. I don't know what the temperature is outside. It's going to get hotter, and we might even get into the 80s again next week, which is uh, uh, quite nice. Marge says, I almost hit a deer with my motorcycle a few days ago. A dog rang out, uh, uh, ran out a young doe in front of me, and it ran across in front of my bike about six feet from me, because Marge drives a, a beautiful motorbike. It was running so fast, its legs were stretched out behind it, and it looked like it was flying about three feet from the ground. I don't drive fast, so I'm happy it missed me. No, me neither. I mean, I haven't got a bike. I've got a car, a little Toyota Yaris, but I, I certainly don't drive fast. Even on the motorway, 60 mile an hour is, is fast enough. You know, you don't need to go any faster than that. Why do you need to travel faster than 60 mile an hour on the motorway? Yeah, you don't. As the added bonus of the fact that when police cars come up behind you, they just pass and wave. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Of course, Ron drives far too... Him and his boyfriend, they drive far too fast for my liking. Everywhere has to be at the maximum. You know. Motorway, always 70 mile an hour. Maximum speed all the time. Drives, drives me. And too close to the cars in front. They do drive too close to cyclists. Listen to me moaning. Proper old man, am I, honestly? Everyone here in the US is remembering 9-11 a couple of weeks ago. It's hard to believe 14 years has passed since it happened. And I remember it well. I remember being in Bracknell Shopping Centre and going past the TV shops and, and seeing all this. I thought, what's going on? And all these people were gathered around the tellies watching this happen. I think we thought it was a film because, of course, you can't hear the sound. And then we realised it was a news channel. It was a long time ago. I'm glad you're back in one piece. Did Ron get converted to Catholicism? <laughs> From Marge, because Ron's Jewish. No, he didn't, unfortunately. Uh, because he couldn't get up in time for Mass. He couldn't get his arse out of bed in time for the bloody Mass, could he? To come with me to the Vatican for Mass, but there we are, one of those things. Thank you, Marge. Nice to hear from you. And uh, I see you on the Skype as well this morning. And um, uh, we'll have a little chat on, on the phone next week, if that's all right with you, Marge. Hello to James, who sent in uh, two emails recently. One just before, let me see this, 7th of September. We, he actually sent this in just before we went away. It says, hope your holiday goes well. Well, it did, yes. Uh, uh, concerts as a football club, because I was saying I'm going to see Barry Manilow in... Um, oh, is it? Oh, Robin says it's 12 years. Is it 12 years since 9-11? I can't remember now. 9-11. I don't know. 12 or 14, one of the two. I was saying that I'm going to see Barry Manilow at Wembley. And I've never been to kind of a, a football place to go and see uh, a musical thing. And uh, James says, 
As for concert at a football club, Elton John did a concert at Charlton Athletic a few years ago. Temporary seating can be arranged at the front of the stadium, and if you've been to an open-air concert, it's not too much difference. Also, the football club will have their own tannoy system, which helps. Oh, James, I very much doubt that um, a musical event would be using the same tannoy system as used for football announcements and things like that. You know, so... No, they, they would bring their own sound systems, I would guess. We were also talking about printer ink. And why, why is it so expensive, printer ink, a couple of weeks ago? James says there are some cheaper options around. One of them I found on eBay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've bought non-genuine printer inks before, and it's broken two printers, so I don't do that anymore. I only buy the genuine printer stuff. In fact, I had a bit of a problem with my brother, uh, laser jet uh, only yesterday um, the I, I changed the you know the drum because a laser a laser uh, printer it's a black and white printer a laser drum you have to change after so many hundreds or whatever thousands of copies and the light came on it said the drum needs replacing so I put the new drum in because I always keep one spare and um, the light didn't go out and, oh why isn't this light it's still telling me to change it so I rung them up and apparently you have to reset the um you have to reset the drum counter which i managed to do and they told me this over the internet so that was quite good um local libraries i'm surprised they are still surviving to be honest i haven't been in a library for years i used to go into one in roehampton where i grew up uh, do do people do, do you go in libraries at all anyone Anyone go in a library anymore? How much do you use your library? Perhaps you'd like to answer that one on the email, OK? Email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, James then sent this in last week. Who says, hi, Chris, glad your holiday um, went OK to the Vatican. Well, it wasn't just the Vatican, it was, it was Rome. You know, Vatican was just part of it. The Vatican, by the way, the Vatican is much larger than you could ever, ever imagine. Don't think you're just going there to see a big church and a big bit outside. There's a lot more to it than that. You will need a few days if you ever want to go around the Vatican, OK? You will need a few days. Oh, Robin says it was 2001. So 2001, two, yeah, it's 12 years. 12 years ago since 9-11. Did we have our thing on the same year just after that, was it? What was the one we had? Did we have 11-11? Or 9-11? Oh, I can't remember. You know, if they just used the correct titles of these terrible events, and it'd be a lot easier to understand, wouldn't it? Instead of using numbers, 9-11 is like a... I don't know why they, they did that like that. Well, because of the date, obviously. You know? But it'd be a lot easier if they said the, the, the you know, the, the, the crash into the towers on 9-11. That would be a lot easier, wouldn't it? Um, I can't remember if it was you or Ronnie saying that there was a bit of graffiti in Rome, which is sad. Yes, there seems to be quite a lot of graffiti in Rome on the old buildings, which is a bit of a shame. I've seen this a bit across Europe. as quite a lot of it, which is when I went to Paris. And there seemed to be a little bit of it when I went through Slyus in Holland. I, and so I've never been to Holland. I should go to Holland, really. And it's just scribble and it looks horrible. But what Banksy does is good and makes the place look good. Yes, um, even here, even here in um, Bracknell, we have not so much graffiti, but graffiti paintings. We have a lot of underpasses here. This is, I live in a new town, which isn't new anymore, but at the time it was a new town. And they have a lot of underpasses. And on the walls, they've got like, they've obviously employed someone to do graffiti type painting. And it actually looks quite good. Ah, oh, yes, so 7th of July was our one, was it? 7th of July was our one, yes, 7 7. 7 7, 7 11. Oh, it's very, very complicated. Um, James says. There used to be someone who used to do what Banksy did and did that kind of art where I was doing the late 70s and 80s. It was there for years. 
Um, where? Where were you talking about here, James? That doesn't make sense, me old mate. There used to be someone that used to do what Banksy did, and they did that kind of art where I was, doing the late 70s and 80s, and it was there for years. Where? Don't get that bit of your email, my friend. One painting was a painting of the River Thames, and graffiti like that. I like that. I like that. Beautiful Thames, isn't it? It was, uh, if you stop on, which bridge is it now? Um, forever visiting the UK, right? Go out at night time and stand on London Bridge. Stand on London Bridge and look one way and look the other. You will see the most beautiful sight that you don't see in any other city. It's so beautiful. You see the old... Um, Tower Bridge and all that business and the other way I think you can see the London Iron Big Ben we might have to go down to the next bridge for that which is um, <gasps> Westminster Bridge you, know, you go on Westminster Bridge you see a lot from there and then the, the, the river goes round so it goes round so you need to walk down to the next bridge which is a little bit of a walk but it's worth it if you ever come to the UK go out at night time when it's pitch black and see see the, 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 the place all lit up okay uh, it was a shame, one painting was a painting of the River Thames and graffiti like that. It was a shame that it stopped and eventually went. Well, what stopped? Oh, it is a bit, a bit confusing this week, James. I'm, I'm not following your email at all. Uh, glad that Kate is okay and making an appearance again, which you saw at the uh, at the beginning of the show there, didn't you? Thank you for your email, as always, James. Uh, Rick says, you and Ronnie sound like an old married couple. Hilarious. That will never happen. Listen, I went out with Ronnie about 20 years ago, OK? I know him much better now than I used to know him when, when, when we went out. We will never, ever... We don't fancy each other from a start, you know. Who in their right mind wants to go out with someone the same age? Let's be honest about it. <laughs> we would end up absolutely murdering each other. We really would. It, it would. it would never happen. It would never happen. He's all right. You know, sometimes he comes round. I don't mind him staying for two minutes, even three sometimes. Anything more than three minutes is just a nightmare. It really is. So there we are. Uh, well, there we are. And uh, I think that's it tonight, boys and girls. Thank you very much for uh, watching and listening. Uh, it's Saturday, as I say. It's Saturday the... What is it? Saturday the 21st of September 2013. If you're around in the London area tonight in Hammersmith, then I'm doing karaoke this evening. I'm hosting a karaoke night at the Lorry Arms in Hammersmith. OK? The Lorry Arms in Hammersmith tonight. Karaoke on the Shepherd's Bush Road, 9pm till 1am, completely free to go in there. It's a lovely pub and we set up in a big conservatory in there. There's a lot of space, little, not too many lights, there's a little bit of lighting just to light up the singers and there's me pushing the buttons and I might sing a couple of tunes as well if my voice comes back. I think you might have noticed my voice is a little bit uh, down today, so that's tonight. Uh, and mon uh, Tuesday, uh, Sunday night... Also, karaoke Sunday night in North London, so that's West London. West London karaoke tonight, Saturday the 21st, in the Lorry Arms, 9 till 1, free entry. North London tomorrow night, Sunday night, karaoke at Belushi's, Camden High Street, between 8pm and 12 midnight, that's Sunday night, free entry. And South London on Monday night, karaoke uh, at Blue Shears in Borough High Street, that's near London, that's on London Bridge, near enough, a little bit further back from London Bridge, on the south side of the river. Uh, free entry again, you'll need photo ID for that one, and that one is 10pm to 2am, alright? Thanks to Robin for a little message there, saying great fun, thanks Chris, uh, see you soon. Yes, pleasure to work with you again last night, um, uh, Robin, it's been a, been a while, hasn't it, my friend, been a while. And uh, that's it, thank you very much for watching and listening. Don't forget, boys and girls, if you want to send in an email, if perhaps you're watching a recording of this show, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, it'll be an absolute pleasure to hear from you, and I shall read your um, email out, hopefully, on the next show. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You have a lovely Saturday, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye now.